It is a hazy one today in downtown Los Angeles. We are in Memorial Coliseum on this Saturday in November. Oh, those November games are so important when it comes to races for national championships as number two Washington is visiting an old nemesis, USC, University of Southern California Trojans. Hello again, Don Poyer along with Husky All-American Chuck Nelson. Nice to have you with us. I can't remember the last time a team came into Los Angeles to take on the Trojans and they were 14-point favorites, the visitors, that is, Chuck. Certainly not a Husky team in quite some time. Only one victory for the University of Washington against, against USC in the Coliseum since 1964. That's a long time. <laughs> a win in 1980, the last time the Huskies were victorious here. Mm -hmm. Since we are in November, let's take a look now at the race for the Roses. This is the all-important race, as you know. Washington at 5-0. and And over in the Big Ten, as you see, Michigan's still in the driver's seat along with the Huskies in the Pac-10. And by the way, according to the point system that the Pac-10 uses, Chuck, Washington could actually afford to lose one game even if UCLA and Cal go on and win the rest of theirs. Very similar to the situation in the Big Ten. I believe Michigan only has to win two of their last three. Mm -hmm. So the matchup is basically set for the Rose Bowl, but anything can happen. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the Huskies. First of all, on offense, they've got a couple of fullbacks that have really been doing an excellent job, that being Matt Jones and Darius Turner, a healthy Turner. Uh, finally a healthy Darius Turner, the starter all year last year. Between the two of them, they've only got 250 yards rushing, but they've got an offense that's averaging 236 yards per game on the ground. Neither one of these guys came here to block, but they're both doing a great job, both for the running game blocking and in blocking for the passing game as well. Other side of the ball, defensively, Brett Collins, that linebacker, he along with Jaime Fields have just taken turns starting. Jaime Fields started most of last year for an injured Brett Collins, uh, or excuse me, the other way around, Brett Collins started most of the way last year. Jaime Fields started early this year. He and Brett Collins, basically whoever plays the best on one Saturday, starts the following mm -hmm. Saturday. Brett Collins will get the start today. Now for USC, a real question mark at quarterback. They're still waiting for Reggie Perry to come through. Maybe it'll be the freshman Rob Johnson. Well, Rob Johnson, the younger brother of Brett Johnson, former UCLA, now Michigan State quarterback, came in and threw the ball effectively in the fourth quarter last week against Cal for USC. Reggie Perry is a great athlete compared to Rodney Pete, but only one touchdown pass this season for your starting quarterback through eight games. You've got to do something. When you've got a team that's three and five, the quarterback is the position that comes up for grabs. And the USC famous tailback position. Deion Struther has played magnificently in the last few games ahead of Mazio Royster who keeps uh, becoming injured. Well, Mazio Royster, the leading returning rusher in the Pac-10 from last year, had over 1,000 yards last year. Larry Smith says he doesn't care who carries the ball from that tailback position. He just wants productivity out of the position. 1,152 yards from their top three tailbacks, if you include Estra Creighton, from that position so far this year. So he's getting productivity, but for more than one yeah, guy. Yeah. All right, let's look at the game keys now as far as this contest with Washington and USC. When you talk about Washington on offense, their problem all year has been that they've stopped themselves over 13 or over 10 penalties in the last three games. The USC's defense has got to give the ball to their offense in good field position, give them a short field to work on. If we turn the, turn the flip around and you talk about USC when they've got the ball, they've got to get that historic USC running back game going. Tommy Trojan's got to run, run, run. It's something that they like to do. University of Washington defense would love to see Rob Johnson come into the game. Reggie Perry has not thrown the ball very well. If USC has to throw the ball, Rob Johnson might come into the game. The young freshman, that Husky defense will be so aggressive. They'd love to rattle him like they did Todd Marinovich last year. Well, one thing in Washington's favor today is the weather. It's very cool down here. It's only in the low 60s, and we'll have the kickoff from Los Angeles here at Memorial Coliseum in just a minute. USC won the toss. They chose to defer, so Washington will receive here in the first half to get things started. The weather is almost perfect. It's been a hazy, foggy morning. The sun now coming out, but very comfortable playing conditions. Temperature about 72 degrees. So a perfect afternoon. The football field not in all that bad a shape for being in November. A dry day in California. They talked about 20% chance of rain. This field is known for being a little bumpy on occasion. 
and a little sandy as well. Of course, the Raiders play here as well as USC, but we're ready to go. Back to kick is J.J. Dudem, a junior, and a backup for Cole Ford, the normal kicker, who injured his hip earlier this week. Dudem with a few butterflies. He hasn't had any action this year. Smith and Kaufman back to receive. It's Kaufman from the five. Turn and the tackle by number 37, Don Cunningham. So Billy Joe Hobart with his troops next to him, Mark Brunell and Coach Jeff Woodruff, the quarterback coach, coming onto the field. Starting at quarterback, of course, Billy Joe coming in for his ninth straight start here in 1991. Billy Joe completing about 60% of his passes here in 1991. First play, Vito Bryant, not much there. Don't be surprised if you see a very physical game, especially in the beginning, as Mazio Royster carries on first down. You know the USC is going to be excited. Their season can be made with two victories in their last three games over Washington and UCLA. You saw the backfield, the offensive line, with Ed Cunningham, the center, and the senior out of Virginia. It's going to be second down. Gain of only one yard, so it's second down and nine. The ball on the 21-yard line. Receivers, check that. Two receivers, McKay and Bailey, wide to the left side with the I formation. Vito Bryant again. Not much there. USC has decided they want to try to stop the run first. A gain of only two yards, so it'll be third down and seven. Inside the people stopping it right now: David Webb, Jason Ewell, and Terry McDaniel's. Webb very light at only 225. Pretty good group of linebackers. Speed is their biggest forte. Calvin Jones and Jason Oliver. Stephon Pace. Pace been around a while. And Mike Salmon. So it is third down and seven with the ball on only the 23-yard line. Three receivers to the left side. Billy Joe to throw. Across the middle. Orlando McKay. And he is hogtied by Mike Salmon, number 24. Had a man wide open on the flat on the left side. Over electing to go downfield to try to get the ball to Orlando McKay, pick up enough through the air for the first down. Good protection. You see the good job by the Husky offensive line, lined up butt to butt. The ball well delivered, but the key phrase there is over the middle. Orlando McKay has an opportunity to make a play on the ball, but Mike Salmon is there as well to make a play for the Trojan defense. Curtis Conway back to receive. He can play both as a flanker and as a quarterback and as a punt returner good punt by John Wardell from his own 32 is Conway and he is met there immediately good coverage by the Huskies Matt Jones the fullback with the tackle 45 yard punt by John Wardell he's averaging 40 almost 42 and only a four yard return so Reggie Perry's the man Chuck Nelson a lot of controversy this week. Reggie Perry only one touchdown pass on the year. Anytime you're three and five, the quarterback is going to take a lot of heat. Rob Johnson, the young freshman, the true freshman, played well in limited duty last week. But Perry is the guy that Larry Smith is going to go with. Ten interceptions, one touchdown. First and ten as the ball is on the 37-yard line of USC. Three people in the backfield. Boom! Down goes number 25, Dion Struther. Is that Andy Mason in there? Andy Mason, once again, penetration by the youngster from Longview. Two-yard loss for the Trojans on first down. You see the backfield and the offensive line, a young offensive line for this USC team. His second down and 13, a loss of three after that great play. Same formation. And again, Perry is brought down as he got up to about the 35, gain of two yards, as Chico Fraley and company were there for the stop. Andy Mason, Tyrone Rogers, and Steve Edmund, familiar names. Donald Jones will lead this core of linebackers. Speed also their forte and strength. Walter Bailey, he's had an interception in what, three, four, five straight games. He's played very well. Three straight games, five of his last six. Third down and 12 from the 35-yard line. Receivers both sides. Conway to the near side. 
Barry's going to throw. Play action. Here comes some heat. He's got a man wide open. First down, USC, as he goes to their possession receiver, Johnny Morton. Good up to near the 50-yard line, right on it. Gain of 15. Johnny Morton is indeed the possession receiver for the Trojans. Big third down play. Man to man, the first series for the Huskies on offense. SC is able to come up and stop the Huskies. SC is faced with third and long and is able to take advantage of that Husky defense man to man coverage. Completion and a first down. So it's first and 10 right on the 50 yard line and Perry wants to throw again. Looks for the same man, different man that is, at Joel Scott instead of number 80, Johnny Morton, and good for another first down. So William Doctor playing in the right corner, giving a lot of room to the receivers. Larry Smith in his fifth year now at USC and taking a lot of heat from the press and supporters at three and five. And when your head coach at USC, enough is said. First and ten now at the 39. USC with a very impressive opening drive. Most of it through the air. Nothing on the ground. Perry. Again, they give room to Morton. And he finds his way up close to another first down. Washington really giving them room. Three consecutive completions to that left side. Walter Bailey in on two of them. William Doctor, the defender, on one of them. Well, Walter Bailey is hobbled a little bit with a bad left ankle. Was wearing a walking cast during the week everywhere but in practice. So the Huskies are exposing a soft spot at this point. We'll see. I see taking what Washington is giving them at this stage. First and 10 ball on the 29 yard line of Washington. Conway wide to the right side. They haven't gone to him yet. They got the option. Look out. Reggie Perry all the way down to the 22 yard line. Walter Bailey up with a stop. And SC's got it going. And Huskies on defense anyway look a little flat at this point. Not, yeah. sure, not sure what to attack. Yeah. SC expected to come out and run the ball. Runs the ball in the first couple downs, loses three yards, and thrown it ever since. Huskies off balance, the option play there to the left side. A great block by Bradford Banta, the tight end, to keep the force man from coming upfield on Perry. That was a gain of eight yards. It's second down and two, down to the 21-yard line. Struther the, in the backfield. Wanting to throw is Perry. Got a man, it's Morton brought down by Dana Hall. Gain down to about the 16-yard line. Dana Hall defending. And Tommy Smith. Perry says, let's try the other side for a while. Work on Dana Hall. Another first down catch for Johnny Morton. You can see they just roll out to the right. Something that Perry does very well. Ball's delivered on target. Dana Hall, too much separation to make the play. This is the eighth play of this drive. Been a long one. Started back on their own 32-yard line. And they have done virtually all of it through the air other than an eight yard keeper by Perry. First and 10 on the ground. Struther, not much there. Dana Hall stops him after he is hit initially by Dave Hoffman, number 54. Gain of one. And Don James' team has not won down here until night since 1980. Nobody needs to remind him of it. The last time they won before 1980 was 1964, so only one victory in 27 years for the Huskies against the Trojans in this stadium. Second and nine to give a one-yard play to USC earlier. Morton to the right, Curtis Conway to the left side. Terry wanting to throw again, a little timing pass as they try to go to Dana Hall. And Hall defending, rather, against Morton. Dana Hall no flag, coverage. good coverage. Dana Hall, a difficult guy to beat on what they call a fade route because of his height, six foot three on defense. Not the kind of guy you're going to lob the ball over. That is Perry's first incomplete pass of the day. He's had no problem with percentages. 53% completion rate. He just can't get the ball in the end zone. He's averaging 160 yards a game on the ground or through the air. USC one for one on third down conversion. Third down and nine. They need to get down to the six-yard line. Perry's still with it. And everything got jammed up as USC was really plugged by Washington. West Bender in there, I believe, the fullback, along with Perry and the defensive line of Hempman, Mason, and company, really plugged it. Try to run the dive portion of the option. You can 
see the goal left. Just penetration by the Husky defense. Andy Mason gets in. Steve Edmond is there. Rod Reggie Perry, not sure whether he's going to give the ball to Bender or not by the time he decides. It's too many white jerseys. Okay, now, Chuck, we've got a kicker here, and J.J. Dudum, who hasn't made an attempt all year, hasn't made an attempt. 33-yard attempt. No good. From 33, and the Huskies are able to hold USC. First time this man's been on the playing field due to the injury to regular kicker Cole Ford. And empty covered for USC after that drive. Ladies and gentlemen, the USC is out. Welcome back, Tommy, Tommy Smith and Company held USC, and Barbara Hedges was honored. Of course, she used to be associate athletic director at USC, now the AD at Washington. An endowment has been formed in her name down here at USC for a scholarship fund, so a nice expression of uh, admiration by USC. First and ten now for Washington as they try to set up the pass, trying to go deep. And a lot of heat that time on Billy Joe Hobart. Maybe he was trying to set up a screen, Chuck. Uh, threw the ball downfield into double cover. Stephon Pace there to make the play. Calvin Holmes also there. Uh, his hit was almost a little early, too. Stephon Pace, the junior out of Duarte, California. Second leading tackler on this team, along with Mike Salmon, the other safety. That doesn't speak well of your defense. Second down and 10. Ball still on the 20-yard line. Huskies continue to want to throw. They go to Matt Jones, the fullback. He's got a couple of blocks. Eric Wrong and leading the way. And good yardage on second down as he gets up to near the 28-yard line. Calvin Holmes with the tackle, number 21. One of the best ways to combat an aggressive defense, a fired-up defense like the Trojans today, is to take advantage of that aggressiveness. Let them come to you, think they, think they got you, and then dump the ball over their heads. Matt Jones out here in the open. David Webb giving chase. Matt Jones cuts off the blocker wrong, and he's got more yards than that. Instead, he just takes the dive via Calvin Holmes. Third down, gain of seven, so it's third and three. Hobart wanting to throw again. Got a man, Mario Bailey. First down up to the 40-yard line. Gain of 13. Stephon Pace was the man on the tackle. Not an easy pass by any means over to Mario Bailey. That's now 22 straight games he has caught a pass as a Washington Husky. The senior having some kind of year, averaging almost 19 yards for reception. First and 10. Ball on the 41-yard line. They keep it on the ground. Bino Bryant gets maybe three. Call it four yards. As number 84, the inside linebacker, and converted tight end, Gideon Burrell, makes the tackle on Bino, who's averaging right now rushing a little over six yards per carry. Huskies also, in addition to USC, have their tailback trio with Bryant Berry and Napoleon Kaufman. They're well over 1,000 yards as well. Second down and six as both receivers go to the right side. They keep it on the ground again. Vino Bryant with a big seam. He can go a long ways down to the 30. He can go all the way. He's running away from all the USC Trojans. Touchdown, Washington. 55 yards. Touchdown, Huskies. A 55-yard touchdown run by Bino Bryant. Few people in the country are as good in open field as Bino Bryant. You can see nobody even gets a hand on him. Extremely well blocked by the big guys up front. And Bino Bryant is, from the time he touches the ball in open space, just turns on those famous jets and goes 55. Travis Hansen with the extra point. And the Huskies here in the first quarter take the lead. 7-0-7-22 remaining first quarter.
55 yard touchdown run by the man on the right, Vino Bryant. And it was impressive to say the least. His sixth rushing touchdown of the year. He takes out 55 of those 80 yards. In fact, he already has for the day 62 yards and one touchdown. The SC sideline's got to be a little disappointed. They have a nice 10 play, grind it out kind of drive. Come up empty. Washington, five plays. Big hitter from 55 yards out. That can wear on a team when you're working hard and getting nothing out of it, particularly when the other team strikes so quickly. Jason Crabb to kick off. Curtis Conway, Travis Hanna back to receive. It'll be Curtis Conway, a dangerous young man. He's to the 10. And only to the, about the 17, 18 yard line. Good coverage by the Huskies. A 16 yard return by Conway who is averaging almost 27 yards per kickoff return. So Reggie Perry will still be in there at quarterback. We are told we will see the other quarterback for USC, the freshman, Rob Johnson, who's just a freshman out of Mission Viejo, the younger brother of Brett Johnson, who played at UCLA and then transferred to Michigan State. No huddle by USC, as Johnny Morton comes out to the right side and is the only wide receiver. First to 10, ball on the 18-yard line. USC second drive of the day. Perry wanting to throw. Morton left wide open, and he dropped the ball and paid the price as Shane Talcoa tattooed him after he lost the pigskin. Dropped the ball and then was dropped. Shane Talcoa with a, an exceptional year here at 91. He has played so well. Talking to his older brother, Jeff Talcoa, now with the Rams. Yesterday at, pra at practice, he's with the Rams, came up to visit with everybody. Perry now four of six, 62 yards. So it's second down and 10 ball still on the 18. Perry wanting to throw. They go to the tight end, Yanni Jackson up to about the 25 yard line. Serious hitting going on down there. Gain of seven yards. Jackson, their leading tight end in terms of re receptions. That's his 21st of the year. We'll do a lot of this, Will USC, with Reggie Perry. A lot of play action. Washington obviously going to favor the run. You see how Emman is controlled by number 71, Tony Baselli. Baselli rated one of the top newcomers, a redshirt freshman, one of the top youngsters. Did a good job on the top defensive lineman in the country, according to most, in Steve Emman. Third down and three. Ball right on the 25-yard line. One receiver left. Here comes the option with Perry. Nothing doing. Donald Jones wraps up the quarterback. Donald Jones could be a loss. And it is. Certainly no surprise when Donald Jones <laughs> makes a tackle for a loss. That's uh, going to bring up fourth down, too. That's his... Ten and a half. -a. Ten and a half, -a, as Chuck <laughs> is so famous for. Tackle for loss. Extremely well played. Forces down on Reggie Perry and takes an angle on Reggie Perry so that Perry can't pitch the ball either. Ron Dale back to punt. He's a good one, averaging 41 yards per. Spiral fairly low. Two people back to receive. Napoleon Kaufman and gets just beyond the 40 yard line to 40, 43. They'll mark it on Husky territory. And we saw two receivers instead of one. Interesting move by Don James. We'll be back. First down after that 41-yard punt by USC. Ball on the 43, and Billy Joe's going for all of it. Right off the bat, he's got McKay. Flag down. And you know what it was. It's Calvin Holmes, number 21. Got the arms over McKay. He had a step on Holmes, the senior out of Carson, California. Huskies try to strike quickly. 
See the pass interference official call. Preliminary call and Calvin Holmes with one interception all year and three pass deflections. Huskies came out testing him right away. The Orlando pass interference against the defense. 15 automatic first down. Pleasure Homer has had trouble throwing the deep ball this year, but that ball is thrown right between Calvin Holmes and the deep safety Mike Salmon. And Holmes is there just a little bit early. He is their best cover man at a cornerback. USC plays don't not do not play left corner, right corner. They play wide wide side and boundary corner. They put Jason Oliver into the short side because he is the better run support guy, and they put Calvin Holmes out to cover the majority of the field. Whether we'll see this man today or not, we do not know. Rob Johnson, the freshman quarterback. First down, Ben O'Brien again, trying to find that seam, but Matt Gee, number 48, is one of the first to get to him. Gee, one of the few seniors out there, I think only three seniors on this whole team, started for USC today. Three seniors today, you gotta look at the right guard for the University of Washington, or in this case, the strong, or the weak guard, that's Chris Wrong, and he's gonna loop around and try to pick off a linebacker. You can see the shot he gets on Gideon Merle. Bino breaks back. The 55-yard touchdown run to put the Huskies up by seven. On second down and six, short gain by Washington. Down near the 35-yard line. And the man with that healthy back, Darius Turner, finally beginning to contribute for this team and has done so the last couple of games. Didn't even get a chance to suit up the first few games of the year. Has slowly worked his way back into where he and Matt Jones are virtually splitting time at the fullback position. Third down and three. Bailey to the left, McKay to the right side. Billy to throw. Across the middle. Tight end, Aaron Pierce. He's brought down by number 48, Matt Gee. Went down the elevator with Aaron yesterday. He was talking about Willie McGinnis, their outside weak side linebacker, about how he's so quick and has a 38-inch vertical leap. Well, in this case, it was an inside linebacker who stopped him, Matt Gee. So nice to have a guy like Aaron Pierce that you can go to on a third down and three, a 240-pound, six-foot-five target. <laughs> Just let him find some space and get it to him. First down for the Huskies now. First and 10 after that reception of 12 yards. Bino, oh boy, big seam again. Can he get away? Oh, he cannot. Night play by Mike Salmon. The free safety coming up. Otherwise, he had lots of green in front of him. Three-yard play could have been 13 easily. We saw on the replay of the touchdown, an effective block by Chris Wrong, and another good one on that play. Very similar-looking play, but this time, Salmon is able to get some fingers and a hold on to Bino Bryant. You know, it's second down and seven. The ball now down to the 20-yard line with 3.37 remaining in the first half. Huskies up by seven. Seven zip. Over. Look out. Interception. Right into the midst of Stephon Pace. That's his first interception of the year. And Billy Joe just suffered his eighth. A return of four yards by Pace. Get a look at Orlando McKay on the top side of the field. He's going to run a curl route. See the tight end Aaron Pierce is supposed to run the out route. And that safety is supposed to hang over on Aaron Pierce. Looks like he's going to. Stephon Pace, the junior veteran, fools Billy Joe Hobart there. Instead of running with the tight end, he came back and made a play on the ball. This is what Stephon Pace was seeing. You can see. Hangs out to the left and then makes the break on the ball in front of Orlando McKay. First and 10 with the ball on the 15-yard line. And they give it to Strother. Look out! Lots of room as he gets up to the 30. St. Palcoa finally gets him along with Walter Bailey at the 37-yard line. This is the man that is so impressive in the last few games for USC. He picks up 22 yards on that play. Anytime, Deion Strother. Anytime you can displace a thousand yard rusher you can see a cut back against that aggressive husky pursuit Falcoa shows good speed and chasing down Struthers but we talked about one of our game keys that husky offense cannot make mistakes turnovers and penalties particularly when you've got a chance to score first to ten now on the 37 Struther again this time nowhere to go as Jaime Field comes up and makes the play Jaime now in there for Brett Collins 
Marco Fraley also in along with James Clifford, number 53 on the inside, and Donald Jones Fields on the outside. Strother now, four carries for 20 yards for the day. Billy Joe with that eighth interception. Second down and 10, they say no gain. Curtis Conway wide to the right side. Terry wanting to throw. Gonna go deep, has got a man going against William Doctor. No flag as the ball was thrown really short and well to the right of the receiver, Johnny Morton. William, William Doctor defending. We've seen him a lot early today. Walter Berry, or Walter Bailey's ankle is apparently bothering him a little bit. William Doctor, certainly a veteran guy, last yeah. year's starter. It's nice to have a three-year letterman senior that can come in as your number two cornerback. You gotta feel comfortable that he can get the job done. USC one of three on third down conversions. This one a long one, third and ten. Perry, look out, heat from behind, incomplete to Perry. Or check it out, number eight, Joel Scott. So, time to punt for USC. Perry here in the footsteps of 300 pound Chris Entman bearing down on his back. He had, had to get rid of it when he had a chance to. Yeah, when a guy like Entman comes up close to you, you can feel the ground shaking. You know he's there. That hot, that hot breath on the back of your neck, you know you're going to yeah. throw it. You saw Bino Bryant. He's going back alone this time as Ron Dale will punt. High spiral. Good move. Bryant. And USC covers him well right at the 20-yard line. A punt of 40 yards. And a loss of one yard for Ben O'Brien on the return. We'll be back with 2:10 remaining in the first quarter. First and 10 for Washington after the 40-yard punt. And following the interception of Billy Joe Hobart, USC couldn't do anything with it. Orlando McKay is the receiver this time, who gets out near the 29-yard line. And he's stopped by Jason Oliver, number four, on an eight-yard play. A minute 55 remaining here in the first quarter. USC's had its opportunities, Judge. They sure have. Drive down to the inside the Husky 25 yard line, inside the Husky 20 yard line, missed the field goal. Second down, one. Jay Berry into the ball game now. And he is brought down, I believe, by Matt Willick, number 96, one of the defensive tackles and younger brother of Bob Willick, who played defensive line for the Huskies. As you see, some of the people in this one year turnaround. See, oh my, they outscored their opponents in the first quarter, 97 to 33. What a difference a year can make. That's right. First and 10 from the 34. Holbert, not bashful, he's going to throw it again. Keith Gilbertson, the offensive coordinator, clearly wanting to keep things spread out on that field by throwing as much as they are. That pass knocked down by David Webb, number 44. Six foot four, he's got. A lot of height to throw the ball over. Only 225 pounds and one of the better athletes on the USC defense. They had to find a place for him to play, and that was the only open spot. He's been very consistent for that Trojan defense this year. One of the top 11. Second down and 10 with three receivers to the right side. Billy Joe looking over the top tight end, Aaron Pierce. Got two, three Trojans on top of him, and he's finally brought down at the 45, and it looks like he has a first down. An 11-yard gain by the tight end, Aaron Pierce, who's had two receptions today. Certainly has become a larger part of that Husky offensive scheme as the multitude of Husky fans that made the trip down to the Coliseum are happy to see another first down for the Huskies. There's got to be well, there's six or 7,000 people sitting down in one corner of the end zone. And a lot of them live down here. First and 10. Again, tight end. Oh, Aaron Pierce couldn't hold on that time. Brian Williams in there defending a backup 
inside linebacker. He really comes in on a nickel defense. Huskies with their fourth consecutive passing play. That's why Williams is in there, apparently committed by Keith Gilbertson to throw the ball. Which surprises me, because USC is seventh in total defense, and they're down in that area as far as rushing defense. They're also ninth against the pass. So they can give it up on the ground and in the air. <laughs> Second down and 10. Jones and Barry in the backfield. They go to Jay Barry, and USC sniffed that one out beautifully. Great job, Matt Gee, the senior out of Arkansas City, Kansas. Did a great job of flowing over and finding the release man. A loss of two yards. Great job downfield also by Mike Salmon. Billy Joe Hobart wanted to throw the ball deep. Started to step up to get into his throwing motion. Thomas Hall in the nose guard was there. Dump it off to the Jay Berry on the side and Matt Gee is there. So it'll be third down and 11 from their own 44 yard line with 18 17 seconds remaining first quarter. Two receivers left, one to the right side. Jay Barry in the backfield. Here comes the blitz. They try to go to Mario Bailey. He was wide open, but the ball, the ball thrown too deep. Defending was Stephon Pace, and he had given up a good three yards to Mario Bailey. Very similar to the play last week for Washington. The safety blitz by the opponent. In this case, Mike Salmon goes. Mario Bailey absolutely oh. ducks <laughs> Stephon Pace. Oh, my. And Billy Joe Hover, you can see in the background, shaking his head at himself. He knows that that was six if he just puts the air in the ball in the air long enough for Mario to get to it. John Wardell and his first punt was 45 yards, so that'll help his average. This is only his second all day. This one not as long to see if he gets the roll. And the Huskies let it come to rest in the 23 of USC. And that's going to do it for the first quarter. Well, we wondered how the first 15 minutes would go to see what kind of tone would be set. Still too close to call. We'll be back. Chuck Nelson on this now sunny Saturday afternoon down in Los Angeles where in the first quarter Washington went 80 yards for a touchdown thanks to a 55 yard shot by Vino Bryant. Larry Smith with only three seniors on this team that started today. They're very young. They're very injured. A lot of people who should have been here as he had planned anyway not on this program or not in this program any longer like a Todd Marinovich at quarterback. A lot of other folks, so he is basically rebuilding. As we start the second quarter, first and ten. Perry wanting to throw, got a man wide open. Raul Spears, a fullback, was left open. And so were his hands. <laughs> got to put the squeeze on that pigskin. Spears has only caught four passes on the yeah. air. Not a guy that they go to a lot out of the backfield. But he was indeed in position to gain a couple there. His longest reception was only seven yards against Notre Dame. So you're right, not used to it. Second down and ten. Ball right on the 23-yard line with three men in the backfield. Spears in motion. They go to David Webb, and there's the fumble, and it's back to USC's hands. As they fake to Webb, Red Collins, one of the people back there, and Reggie Perry on the pitch, not connected with his pitch man. Good fake underneath to Wes Bender. You can see that Brett Collins gets a hand on Reggie Perry, a dangerous play. Sometimes when you're that good an athlete, you think you can do things that maybe you shouldn't be doing. Got away with one there. Strother makes a nice play on the infield grounder. Third down and 10. 
two wide receivers, one to each side. Perry on the straight drop back. Not something he's known for. Got a man who's deep. William Doctor defending, and it is complete to number 19, Travis Hanna. If there's anything that Perry's known for, it's his arm strength. And he used all of it there, and Hanna laid out and made the beautiful catch. Certainly no problem getting the ball downfield here to Travis Hanna. Few guys in the country as fast as Travis Hanna. 4-2-1 in the 40. William Doctor filling in again for Walter Bailey with that bad ankle. Lays out and catches the ball. Straight drop back, something you don't see a lot of from Reggie Perry. The time is provided, just enough time. And the ball is provided to Travis Hanna. First down for SC on the 33. 39-yard gain to go to Struther up the middle and hit hard by Hillary Butler along with Shane Palcoa. As Struther, who came in, keep in mind now, he had 122 yards against Washington State in the second half alone. He had a career-high 153 yards against California last week playing in his own backyard. He's out of Oakland. Just a kid as a sophomore. So stopping him is not all that easy a chore. And SC's got a little something going again after the 39-yard pass reception. Second down at six after the four-yard gain by Struther. Perry, pretty good time. Incomplete. Andy Mason applying the heat on Perry. USC, much like their tailback situation where they play a lot of guys. A lot of guys at wide receiver also. Curtis Conway is the starter, but you'll see a lot of number one, Larry Wallace, and number 19, Travis Hanna. Reggie Perry seeing a lot of Andy Mason. A reintroduction on that play. The ball thrown well out of bounds. Third down and six. Or two of five on third down conversion. Going with the option again. This time, Struthers, no room. Good play by Chico Fraley, Brett Collins, Dana Hall, a host of Huskies. A tough team to run the option against because they're so fast. Even if there appears to be room, their speed can make up that ground very quickly. A decision for well, Larry Smith. If their number one kicker, Cole Ford, is available, you might try the 50-yarder, but... No, nah, they've, they've got to go for it. Because of his hip injury, there's not a whole lot of doubt. Well, if they make it here, it's a huge emotional boost. If they don't, at least they have the Huskies fairly deep in their own territory. So they're going to go with it from the shotgun. Morton to the left, Conway to the right. They need to get to the 28-yard line. Too far. Morton, the intended receiver, they tried to split the corner and the safety. And the Huskies take it over on down. Nice, ch nice chance for USC to gain some momentum, but they come up empty. We'll return to the Coliseum right after this. Huskies with a 7-0 lead with 12.50 remaining here in the second quarter. Don Foyer along with Chuck Nelson. You see Walter Bailey. And he's got the bad wheel, doesn't he, Chuck? He's talking to Dennis Seeley, the head trainer there. Bad left ankle for Walter Bailey. Was babying it all week. Tried to go early today. Gave up a couple of out routes to Johnny Morton early. And we've seen William Doctor ever since. And USC's thrown for 84 yards in only a quarter and 220. So the passing game has been successful. Walter Bailey will know about the missed. In the first quarter, Washington rushed for 76 yards and passed for 52 yards. As you see, when he went for fourth down, went for the first. First and 10 now from the 34. Billy Joe on the play action. Got a tight end. That's Aaron Pierce who stays aboard. Somehow on his feet as Stephon Pace trips him up. 
but a good seven yard gain on first down. Billy Joe Hobart has done a great job today of going to his second receiver. Looking downfield there to Orlando McKay. Stephon Pace on the coverage. McKay is not open. Again, you got a six foot five inch target to dump it off to. To set up a second and short, you're going to take it. And he's done a good job of coming off the first guy. McKay and Bailey are wide to the right as they go to Jay Barry. And nothing doing as number five, that being the backup linebacker, Brian Williams, on the play. He's another youngster, just a freshman, a true freshman. It's only 215 pounds playing an inside linebacker, but that's what you could do with a 215 pounder is send him. Yeah. Make him run. Use his speed. Don't make him stand there and take on guards. Third down and three, a loss of one yard. Three receivers right side. Across the middle, too hard. I don't know why Billy was throwing with that much velocity. No such thing as too hard. Yes, it is. Re that close? Receiver's got to make the catch. He gets two hands on this ball. It's third down and three yards to go. No doubt the ball was coming fast, but when you're averaging over 100 yards per game, you got to make catches on every situation. Billy Joe knows the ball is well delivered. Yeah, but you're throwing the ball over the middle. You don't want to hang the guy up any closer oh, no, than he possible. Was, he was wide open, though. Get it to him. We're down the punt. Hi, nice punt. Good hang time. Conway calls the fair catch at the 18-yard line. Good thing he did. Hillary Butler was waiting for him for lunch. Let's take a timeout here in Los Angeles with the Huskies leading 7-0. John Foyer, along with Chuck Nelson, there's your lead. In terms of running to pass balance for the Huskies, nine rushes and 14 passes. The Huskies have chosen to go upstairs a lot more often. First and ten now, after the punt by Washington. Struthers gets outside, all the way out to the 39, 30, well, check that, the 35-yard line. And Struthers showing some mighty fine stuff as he's finally knocked out of bounds by Dana Hall. Larry Smith with two good tailbacks in Struthers and, of course, Macy Royster. Struther averaging, averaging five uh, yards per carry. The 200-pounder, nice block by 38. Raul Spears here kind of comes around the tight end, takes off the pursuit from inside. Struther, just get on the big backside of your 240-pound fullback. First and 10 now after the gain of 16 yards. Perry wanting to throw. Not all that open, but Johnny Morton was the intended receiver while Walter Bailey was defending. So they're going to test Walter right off the bat. Missed the last couple of series. His ankle's been bothering. They probably retape it, send it back in. He's a competitor. A game like this, a guy like him is not going to sit on the sidelines if he can go out there anyway. He wants to make plays, and Larry Smith wants his Trojan quarterback to deliver the ball when somebody's open. Perry is 6 of 14, 84 yards today. Balanced attack now, wide receiver on each side on second down. Coming from behind. And the sack by number 48, Donald Jones. Jones was sack number six and a half here in 1991. Boy, that couldn't have come at a better time. Four yard loss. Donald Jones will come from the top of your screen. We said the Trojans don't do straight drop back very often. That's because the defense knows where he is. Donald Jones finds him and finds him quickly. Third in the conference in sacks. He'll keep coming. So it'll be third down and 14. This time two receivers to the left side. Rolling out, getting a little more time, trying to go to the tight end. No go. Defended by Chico Fraley as they went to the tight end, Bradford Manta. 
And Vanta could not hold on. More so it'll of, be fourth down. More of what we expected to see. The rollout on Reggie Perry. He's got such great running ability. Put some pressure on those outside people. But Danak and Smith does a very good job of containing Perry. Don't let him get out to those outside people. And a nice play by Fraley to make the hit before Banta can wrap it up. So Ron Dale back to punt again. He's the senior out of Boulder City, Nevada. Back 10 play of the week. Player of the week on a couple of occasions. This one to Ben O'Brien. He calls fair catch on his own 30-yard line. And that's where the Huskies will set things up. People want him to do it again and quickly. First and 10 from the 30, and Ben O'Brien gets five right off the bat as he's brought down by Matt B, number 48. Also, Stephon Pace. Nice first down gain on the ground for the Huskies. Yeah, you'll take five yards anytime you can get it off the top. As far as rushing, Washington. Second and five. Over 240 yards per game on the ground. Second down and five. Austin. Possibly some room for Vino. Yes, indeed. Gets to midfield. Knocked out of bounds there by Mike Salmon. A first down as he gets into USC territory at the 45-yard line. A gain of 20 yards on the pitch to Bryant. The Huskies with the option game of their own. Billy Joe Hobart. Not the nifthiest runner around, but he's a smart guy, and he's a big guy at two and a quarter. You can see the surge and the seal by the Husky up front, guys. You create a big pile. There's nobody to chase the outside play. Vino with 84 yards. Jay Barry was getting a few himself now. He's down to the 37-yard line, short of the first down. Stephon Pace made the tackle. Let me correct myself. Vino now eight carries for 94 yards rather than 84 and he already has one touchdown and Jay Berry got the call on that occasion Jay averaging over five yards per carry himself Vino back in there now at the tailback spot on second down and three Huskies decide to keep it on the ground a little more often short of the first down Darius Turner was the blocking fullback on this particular game or occasion Vino Bryant in his backyard as well Los Angeles youngster that chose to go up to the Northwest to play his college ball. He's back home trying to look good. He's put on a good show for the home folks so far. See the Huskies know how to move those chains on third and short. Third and two here. Third and two. Jay Barry is in the backfield, but Terry McDaniels brings him down. Number 78. What a play by the sophomore. At 6'4", 285, strongest player on this team, Chuck. The defensive tackle, Terry McDaniels, bench presses 370 pounds, which is the strongest, as Don said, of any Trojan. A big play there, a momentum builder, brings out the Husky punting team. Loss of two, so John Wardell comes out to punt. His longest of the year, by the way, is 58 yards. And they get it first down as they go with Matt Jones. Matt Gee on the tackle. Well, they had everybody relaxed and waiting for that punt. The celebration of third down and the Trojan defense gives way to jubilation by the Husky offense. The straight snap to the up man, Matt Jones, gets enough for the first down. Don James. <laughs> historically known for the bag of tricks in the kicking game hasn't pulled a lot of them out in the last few years but pulls a big one out here well, it worked for me I was looking for the bad snap first down they go to Vino Bryant trying to slice his way along the side and is finally brought down by Stefan Pace after the gate of five yards 725 remaining in the second quarter a perfect spot on the field to run the fake punt the ball's on the 38 yard line too long for a field goal but even a good punt is not going to gain you that many yards in field position if you're unsuccessful on the fake punt yeah you give up the ball but you do give it up deep in your opponent's territory Vino now over the 100 yard mark on just 10 carries Second down and five. Option, Billy's going to keep it. Fights for the first down, but just short as Matt Gee trips him up. 
We have called Gee's name a lot today. He's been busy from that inside strong side linebacker spot. He is their number one tackler, one of the few seniors, as we said, on that Trojan team. 6.31 remaining here in the second half, or second quarter, rather. Husky still two of five in third down situations. This will be third down and one. McKay and Gaspard come out wide to the right side. Vino Ryan, first down, Washington, as they get inside the 20. And the last, about the 18. On the last third and short, the Huskies come out with two tight ends and an H-back and make no bones about it. We're going to run the ball and try to get the first down and come out here, spread the field a little bit, and still run it when you force that defense to cover the whole field instead of just the tackle to tackle or tackle to tight end. Well, when you, a difference. Chuck, when you've got a team as strong as the Washington Huskies are and supposedly as weak as USC is, Beat them up. Keep it on the ground. And it's exactly what they did there again, as now they're inside the 15, as Matt Jones carried. And Willie McGinnis, the outside linebacker, making the stop on Matt. Matt coming into the game at 186 yards, but averaging over five yards per carry. He got five on that play. It's nice to have a fullback that's more than just a pound them kind of running back. Yeah, you have your fullback and average over five yards. You got to like it. Second down and five ball on the 14. McKay and Gaspard to the right side again. And I think we got some movement on Sapele Malamala on the left side of that Husky offensive line. Everybody a little anxious there. Yeah. Well, you could see SC, SC was short. leaning on their heat, leaning on their toes. You know they're coming. Malamala figures I got to get. Get to him before he gets to me. Dead ball fall. Ball start on the offensive team. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That's the first penalty today on Washington and Don James' team. 70 reacting to the motion. <laughs> the SCD. That's when you've got a guy, Hollenquist, number 17, that you're assigned to. You know he's fast. And if he's going to try to come down inside, you're thinking, I got to get there and I got to get there fast. Five minutes left in the quarter. Second down and 10. Here comes the blitz by Salmon, the safety. Bailey, one on one. Down to the 10 yard line, and it takes three USC Trojans to bring him down as he gets down to the seven yard line. Ger Gerald Henry is the man who's there first, but they get seven big yards. See the safety, Mike Salmon, is going to be making his blitz. The Huskies do a good job of picking it up. Mario Bailey just hangs short. We're used to seeing him lose people completely. Right here, he turns into Bronco Bailey. <laughs> Lowers his head for first down yardage. First and goal from the seventh. Bino. Looks for the block, fights his way in. Touchdown, Washington! Got away from Marvin Pollard. That was a great effort by Vino Bryant. And some outstanding blocking in front of him, Chuck. An outstanding job by the big guys. Watch 72, Chris Rongen come pulling around. You see Darius Turner help out. Chris Rongen pulls up, gets a hit on Marvin Pollard. Vino Bryant gets that close to the end zone. He wants yellow paint on those elbows. <laughs> Travis Hansen. He's two for two for the day. And the Huskies with 4.22 remaining here in the first half. Move out to a 14 to nothing lead. Vino Bryant with two touchdowns today. And he's over the century mark.
Huskies in this one. O'Brien now on 12 carries. He has 110 yards. And the drive. Six minutes and two seconds. 70 yards, but more importantly, they have six minutes. 11 rushing plays. And here is the last rushing play. The touchdown by Vino O'Brien. Once again, extremely well blocked. Darius Turner, Chris Rogan, the people on the up front for the Huskies doing a great job of stealing off the inside people. Vino O'Brien comes home. Huskies scores now. Too early. Huskies with an 80 yard and a 70 yard drive today. Jason Crab ready to kick off. From the 11, Hannah, who gets up to the 24-yard line and is brought down by Dante Robinson, number 27, a 13-yard return. This, us, or the USC defense has given up long drives this year, 97 yards against Memphis State, you see the 32, or saw the 32 on the wristband of Vino Bryant, thinking about Magic Johnson. He has been an inspired man today. 12 carries, 110 yards, and two touchdowns, and just over a quarter and a half, not too bad. On first down, they go with the pitch to Strother. Shane Palcoa, Dana Hall, and then the nose guard, Dana, or rather Tyrone Rogers, comes into Phil. Good defensive pursuit by the Huskies. Jim Lambright on the left, defensive coordinator. His troops did the job that time. Gain of four by Struther. Got an injury, too, for one of Lambright's players. Larry Slade on the right, secondary coach. Keith Gilbertson on the left with the glasses. The offensive coordinator. And they got to wait and see which Husky is hurt. Minnesota six. That could have been Dana Hall. East Michigan 13. And it is. Ohio University. Dana 10. had the bad ribs against. Wake Forest 31. Duke 14. Nebraska, I believe it was. Cincinnati Step 30. Little gingerly here. And Tennessee State 10. This time it's the leg. Uh, something that hurts for a minute. And you get up and walk around a little bit. Doesn't feel quite so bad. Dana's the leader of this team, no question, on the defensive yeah, end. Certainly line. in the secondary. As Dana, who came home to play in this game, along with a few other folks, Tyrone Rogers, Dana Hall, Tommy Smith, Bean O'Brien. Dana's hurt. See if he can get back. Second down and five, the calling it from the 28-yard line. And Struthers is met head on. Let's see if they're going to call it a fumble or not. Was that Edmund that hit him first? Steve Edmund, imagine that. <laughs> yeah, Lays surprise, the surprise. Lays the blow on Dion Struther. The ball comes out. The officials rule the play was dead. Huskies, one of the best around at creating turnovers. 30 tur 32 turnovers for this Husky defense coming in. Number one in the country in turnover margin. Two and a half a game. Anytime you're getting the ball two and a half more times than the other team, you're bound to score. Terry in the shotgun, two of his last 11 on third down and five. Across the middle. Looks like it'll be short of the first down as they went for Yanni Jackson, the tight end. Dave Hoffman with some good defense. Perry a little slow getting up. Flag is down on the hit on Perry. A little bit late according to the striped shirts. And it'll go against the Huskies. Huskies have had a penchant for penalties. Been in double figures the last three weeks. Already have more penalties in eight games this year than they did in all 11 last year. Oh, my. They have been big ones for the most part. Excessive celebration, 15 yards at a time. Holding penalties on the offensive side. Roughing the passer against the defense. 15 yards, be tacked on to the end of the run. There you go. The ball is delivered there. Andy Mason with the shot, yeah. undoubtedly late. Mason coming around the corner on Michael Moody, had his head down. I don't think he knew the ball was gone, but there's no excuse for a late hit like that. Just under three minutes now with two receivers to the left side. First and 10. Struther 
And he's brought down before he can even get back to the line of scrimmage. Dave Hoffman in there. Josh Moore on top of the pile, number seven. And Larry Smith trying to bring this SC program back. First time they've lost three straight since, since 19, what, 75. With three games to go and three and five records so far. You've got to win all three to avoid the first losing record in eight years. And the first of Larry Smith's tenure here as the Trojans head coach. No gain. They call it second down and ten. Ball's right at midfield. Option. And they give to their third tailback, Estra Creighton. But a host of Huskies back there, and that's their fifth tackle for loss today, and the Blue Birds are coming out. Chico Fraley, the first to get to Creighton. Not exactly a crisp pitch on the part of Reggie Perry. Ball's hanging in the air a long time. Creighton catches it standing still, and if you're standing still, those Huskies are going to gain ground quickly. Great play, though, by Chico Fraley. He's the one that forced the pitch and still made the tackle on the pitch man. Third down and 12 from the shotgun. Perry calmly gets the ball, throws complete to Johnny Martin, first down. Martin getting away from Walter Bailey. Hezzy play by Reggie Perry after the bad snap. The clock running a million minute and a half to go in the half, SC will go into their hurry up offense. Sometimes an athlete like Perry is the guy that can make something out of nothing. A, may a good mayhem quarterback. First and 10 ball on the 33 yard line. Again from the shotgun. Somebody open, Morton, he's been the man. Short of the first down. And it's brought down by Tommy Smith. Chico Fraley also there. Block continues to run, a minute seven. Then it's six. A touchdown here would make a big difference for SC. Gain of eight yards on the last play. A difference not only on the scoreboard, but in the mind. Second down, short. They go to the fullback, Raul Spears. He has the first down to the 20-yard line. A gain of five. Clock continues now. They'll stop to move the chain, of course. Timeout is called by USC. And the crowd has been given something to cheer about here for the first time in the last few minutes. Timeout for Larry Smith. We'll do the same. We'll get back in just a minute. see now with the 11 first downs in this game Reggie Perry has shown us a little something special in this late first half drive setting it up it's 50 seconds remaining here in the second quarter first and 10 from the Washington 20 yard line and this is the ninth play of this drive they go to the pitch Strother wants to throw pick up the heat and they tackle him it's Tommy Smith and Dave Hoffman get Strother back on the 30 yard line it was obvious he wanted to pass. Timeout is called with 40 seconds remaining. What a play, because that knocks USC all the way back to the 30 and out of field goal range. Not the first time that USC has run this play. You see Dave Hoffman, the linebacker, is assigned to Deion Strother. Deion Strother has one touchdown pass this year. Look at the bottom of your screen. Dana Hall <laughs> stays with the receiver. Strother has no choice but to take the loss, much like a quarterback who was forced to take the sack. Yeah. Hoffman does a great job of reading the play and closing on Strother well, before he gets a chance to make a move. Hoffman made the great play, but I'll tell you, the guy who made the whole play happen was Dana Hall, as you pointed out. Was not fooled for a second. And coming into this game, we knew Larry Smith more than likely would want to try a few different things. Deion Strother has a touchdown pass. As many touchdown passes thrown by the tailback, as by your starting quarterback, you see number 16, Reggie Perry, only one touchdown pass on the year. Rob Johnson, the backup quarterback, with one touchdown pass on the year and one from Strother. So they've got to get some productivity in terms of getting the ball in the end zone through Reg the air. Reggie is highly thought of by this team, and, and fans around here, even the press has been easy on him because of his personality. They feel he is such an up person and knows what he has to do to improve. 
just a youngster out of Denison, Texas, only a sophomore. And remember, Todd Marinovich would have been running this offense had he not gone on to the NFL or been suspended from the SC team. Second down and 20. Perry's got the room to run if he doesn't throw. Here comes Jaime Fields, and he's brought down at the 23-yard line, at 13 yards and short of a first down, with 30 seconds remaining. Gain of seven yards. Richie Perry does a good job there of getting to the sideline. Not only does he pick up a few yards, but he stops the clock. 30 seconds to go in the half. Smart play by the Trojan quarterback. Three receivers come into the ball game now, including the better pass catcher. See Perry breaks the containment of Jaime Fields, the outside linebacker. Fields gains a lot of ground, but so does Perry. When I see the better pass catcher, meaning of the tight ends, that being Yanni Jackson, number 88. And he's wide to the right side with three wide receivers. Perry wanting to throw. Got a man short of the first down is Morton at the 11-yard line with 21 seconds. 20. Clock still running. And SC will call what I believe is their final timeout. With 19 seconds remaining. That's their last timeout. And it is indeed their final timeout. Good job by the Trojans of coming back from the big loss on the attempted tailback pass. Reggie Perry does a good job getting them a few of it back on the rollout to the left. Put him in a position, a nice throw there to Johnny Morton. I hate to say it, but Johnny Morton's been worth his salt here in the first half so far. Morton is their uh, possession receiver. And he's done well. He averages 13 yards per reception as opposed to a Curtis Conway. Conway's been a quiet man today. It's been all Morton in terms of receptions. And of course, the long one to Travis Hanna. He's averaging almost five receptions a game. Certainly beyond that so far today. Been the man that Reggie Perry's looked to. Larry Smith been very patient. As you can see, he's got his arm around his quarterback. Trying to cheer these guys up. You talk to people here in the area, Reggie Perry and the rest of the Trojans as well, have thought of pretty as a pretty good bunch of kids. They work hard, they try hard, they haven't won many games, but they come back every Sunday, every Monday, ready to go back to work. No lack of effort on their part. All right, it's fourth down. They need one yard. 19 seconds remaining. Perry got a man wide open, needs to get to the 10. Oh, my. He went down right at the 10 yard line. Bradford Banta. Let's see how they mark it. If it's inside the 10 at all, it'll be a first down. First down first it is. Down and it'll be first and goal. No timeouts, remember. The clock Ten. will start as soon as the chains are set. 10 seconds to go. First and goal from right at the 10 yard line. And it looks like they'll try to just stop the clock the second he gets the ball. And he does. Seven seconds remaining. You'll waste the down because you're not going to get more than two or three plays off before the half is over anyway. Huskies thought there was a timeout. Hoffman and a few others were coming over to see. See the big fourth down play. A nice cutting tackle by Walter Bailey, but not quite nice enough. Walter Bailey continues to play on that bad left ankle. That time, maybe a shot to the jaw type of tackle. You got to knock the guy backwards. Yeah, you can't let him fall forward. Tough play, though, in the open field. Okay, three wide receivers to the right side for Southern Cal. Seven seconds. It's second and goal from the 10. Perry won the fight of man. Intercepted by Jay Palcoa. His third interception of the year, and Palcoa lays to rest this drive by SC, and you're seeing some discouraged Southern California players for Larry Smith. Walking off the field. The third of the year for Palcoa, but certainly none bigger than that one. What a drive stopper. Two seconds to go in the half. A big fourth down play to put SC in a position to score and gain momentum. Pull within seven. You see a lot of traffic in the end zone. First Dana Hall, again, 6-3, gets his hands on it, gives enough time for Shane Palcoa to cut in front of Curtis Conway. Palcoa smartly downs the ball. 
the Huskies run the half out and take that 14-0 lead into the locker room. So it's Shane Palcoa out of Marysville, Bill Chuck High School. His brother Jeff Palcoa here watching. He's got to be a proud big brother of the old Los Angeles Rams. We'll be back with halftime in just a moment. Just about ready to start the third quarter. I'm Don Poyer with Chuck Nelson. Huskies up by two. Bean O'Brien touchdowns, one of 55 yards and one of seven yards. As the Huskies still riding that 10-game winning streak if you go back to the Rose Bowl and the Washington State game in 1990. And, of course, 18-2 and two overall over last year and this year. Washington, by the way, their other two 10-game streaks was between the 22 and 23 seasons and 81 and 82. That loss to Stanford in 1982 snapped that 10-game winning streak. So the Huskies right now with a pretty good handicap up by 14 going into the last 30 minutes of this game. USC deferred in the first half and they will receive here in the second. Jason Crabb with the boot to Curtis Conway and a good one. What they call it, a satellite kick. When you can't read it at all when it comes at you. I think that's the longest spiral I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> As you see, SC is an old nemesis of Washington, period. Other than the big win last uh, in 1990, it's been a tough go against these gentlemen. Larry Smith in his fifth year, who struggled against Don James and the Huskies as an Arizona head coach, has done well against Washington here at USC. First and 10, ball on the 20 yard line. Reggie Perry played the entire first half and he's still in there at quarterback now. Perry still with the ball. One to go deep. He's got Conway against Dana Hall. Good! Reggie Perry with the pass of his life against Dana Hall, who had the bad wheel, and Curtis Conway brings it in. 46 yards. Once again, we see Reggie Perry on the rollout, gets outside the contain. Curtis Conway on a perfectly thrown ball. Dana Hall is in pretty good position. The ankle didn't seem to bother him on the play, but he doesn't make a play on the ball. You got to look from behind. Reggie Perry, the ball right on the boundary. Conway has speed to burn. He's a 4 2 5 40 guy. Big play for the Trojans. They come out firing. First and 10 on the 34, they go with the pitch. Struther, who had 35 yards in the first half, only gets a couple here. Shane Palcoa, the man with the interception ending the first half, comes up for the hit. Struther with 35 yards in the first half. And remember, he's coming off a 153-yard day against the Golden Bears of California. No points on the board for USC in the first half, but they had a couple of opportunities. We're not that far away from a 14-14 ball game. They have had by far their best success going deep. A Husky defense that has given up the big play on occasion this year has given up a few so far today. But no points. Second down and seven with two receivers to the right side for Perry. Here's the rollout again. This time to Raul Spears, the fullback, covered by Chico Fraley. And he led them too far. We talked about USC and how they'd probably come out and try to establish that USC running game. But 24 Go. passes thrown already by Reggie Perry. Only averaging about 13 throws a game. Surpassed that about six minutes in. 22 in the first half. Two already here today. And they're the offensive coordinator who calls the plays. Coach Matsko, he's putting it up. He played for Don James at Kent State. Four of ten on third down conversions. This one will be short. It'll be fourth down. So they are four of eleven for the day. Good play by Dave Hoffman and Tyrone Rogers in there. 
against Struther, number 25, the sophomore out of Oakland. We have yet to see Mazio Royster. We have no reports of he, him being injured. And they will not kick it. And that, the reason is obvious. Their primary field goal kicker, Cole Ford, has an injured hip and has not been able to kick today even in warm-ups. You talk about the importance of the kicking game and the kickers. They're taking for granted off the ties, but this is an example of what happens when you don't have one. One of two on fourth down. Carries going for it. Here comes the heat. They lay it off. Dave Hoffman drills the receiver after the heat by Collins, Donald Jones, and Tommy Smith. Hoffman with a play, maybe the play of the game so far here in the second half anyway. Reggie Perry wants to throw the ball downfield. Smartly lays it off. You got a guy like Strother. You figure he could make a move, but Hoffman is there so quickly. That's that's an unbelievable defensive play. Got to see that one again if we can later. Let's take a timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. Dave Hoffman, who came up with that last gem of a play. In fact, his teammates made it just a sterling effort as well. <laughs> All the options are taken away. Pressure on the quarterback. He doesn't have time to take too much time. The downfield is covered, so he's got to dump it off. And the dump-off guy is covered. First and 10 on the 33. Little screen over to Bean O'Brien. That's blocking in front of him. That's wrong. And but, oh, somehow he got away from the initial wave of defenders and still got nine yards. Chris Rogan went on downfield and there were a host of Crimson jerseys ready to make the kill. Peter went around them. Hey, look here at the fourth down play. Yards. Because of the Second lack of an effective field goal kicker, USC will go for it. The Huskies go for it. They bring a lot of people. You can see the pressure on the quarterback. Downfield is covered. He's got to dump it off. Hoffman's out there waiting. One of the surest tacklers around. On second and short, Bino O'Brien, and he is drilled by one of the up people. Brought down by Matt Willig. Number 96, Matt Willig, the younger brother of Bob Willig, who played for the Huskies. We mentioned that earlier in the game. Huskies on second and one. You'd like to take advantage of it, just get it over with, get the first down, and keep playing. Now they've set up a third and one situation for themselves. Third and short. Option, Billy. Very close. I'm not so sure he got it. Matt Gee, the inside linebacker there first. Does indeed bring up fourth down. You try to run the option to the open side. No tight end on that side. And the Trojan defense comes up with a big play of their own. The backup quarterback, Rob Johnson, has his headgear on. Wow, I can't really fault Reggie Perry. No, I can't either. We have not seen Johnson warming up. We may see him later. We expected to see him sometime today. Reggie Perry's played a great ball game. Wardell averaging almost 40 yards a punt today. Another good high spiral. Curtis Conway on his own 15. And the fair catch is called. So will we see number 11 come in at quarterback? Now he's still back in. I uh, guess not. He's got the helmet on. No. You can see him on the left of your screen. Now in the center in the back. 42-yard punt by Wardell. And looks like Reggie Perry's still the boss. Out he goes. Play is called on the sideline. Huddling on the sideline. One of the things that that does is it prevents the defense from seeing what personnel is going to come in so they cannot react. The one thing about this Husky defense is they don't care who you put out there. Two tight ends, three wide receivers, no running backs. They don't care. They send that same 11 out there anyway. First and 10. Little top sweep to Struther. Then Dave Hoffman meets him at the line of scrimmage. Nice pursuit by Hoffman as well as Danaka Smith, number 55, coming in to help out. Danaka Smith doing a very good job. He and Andy Mason kind of split time at that defensive end position. You get an ISO on Hoffman, 
chasing the play from the inside. Perfect drill, stays parallel to the line of scrimmage, keeps his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, slides down the line of scrimmage and closes on the running back with perfect form tackle. That's linebacker play right there. They lose two yards on the play. It's second down and 12, now back on the 15. Another dive, and they're gonna lose. Wait a minute, fumble on the back of him. They're saying the ball went down. I thought they had handed off to Struther, and Edmund was all over him like lunch, and it was still in the backfield. And they're saying the man was down. Loss of 10 yards. Pressure on Perry once again. Hoffman will just keep a camera on him. He's coming. I think the ball comes out right here Loss before Perry is on the ground. Undoubtedly, you see the ball is out. Dave Hoffman the cause. So it'll be third down and 22. Two tackles for loss consecutively by Dave Hoffman. You see, he's the leading tackler. That kicks him into 13 tackles for loss on the season. They need 22 yards. Ball on the five. From his own end zone. Dana Hall covering. Larry Wallace, the intended receiver. And Tyrone Rogers with the heat on Perry. That's your nose guard right there, Tyrone Rogers, number 57. Lined up between Craig Gibson, the center, and the guard. That's Clay Hadabaugh. Just puts the pressure on Perry. Throw it downfield. If that's intercepted, it's as good as a punt anyway. Now you got to wonder. But these are not shots that you want your quarterback to take. Do you go for the block or do you go for the good return? Ten people are up for the Huskies. Short punt. Bryant. And down he goes at the 38-yard line. Slight swing of momentum thanks to Dave Hoffman and the Husky defense. And they still lead 14-zip. This program is authorized under television rights granted by the University of Washington. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Prime Sports Northwest is prohibited. This will be Washington's best starting field position today at the Southern Cal 38-yard line. The best previous to that was their own 43. So they need to do something with this opportunity. First and 10. From the 38-yard line, Billy Joe wanting to throw, wanting to throw down the middle is tight end, let it way too far, and he was open. Mike Salmon, the safety, trying to make up for it, but Billy not on target. Second time today we've had receivers open. We being Billy Joe over down the middle. First Mario Bailey is overthrown. Now Aaron Pierce. See nobody comes Ooh. into your picture until late. Get a tight end that can get downfield like that. You'd like to take advantage of it. He's getting open. Ball's not getting there. Bill, Bill and Joe at 9 of 17, 82 yards. Now he calls the audible on second down and 10. Okay, complete going against Jason Oliver, number four. Short of the first down, but down near the 31-yard line. Billy Joe Hobart reads blitz on that play, calls in Mario Bailey. That's an extra blocker. Mario Bailey does a good job, though. Gets into the ankles of the blitzing linebacker, gets his hands down, provides a passing lane for the throw to Orlando McKay. Third down and four, they're calling it. Mario Bailey, 168 pounds, not exactly a blocker. Ball on the 32. Bryant trying to get outside. He does. Has a blocker in front of him, uses him, and gets down to the 13-yard line. What a run by Vito Bryant. It is as if he had stored up all his energy at halftime and then had a chance to see what he could do. An 18-yard jog by that man, Vito Bryant, who already had 111 yards in the first half. Get a look at the blocking. Chris Rong at number 72. Mala Mala on Guy. You got 320 versus 220. Not too tough to tell who's going to win that battle. Bean O'Brien on the sprint draw does a good job of setting it up inside and cutting it back outside. First and 10 of the 14th. Fumble! 
SC ball. Somehow Billy Joe did not connect with Ben O'Brien. And you don't see that very often. Only the 13th turnover on the year for this Husky offense. We talked about Don James and his Huskies need to take advantage of the great field position. Ball comes out on the handoff. Indian Burrow comes up with a loose ball. Trojans make a big defensive play of their own. Oh. Second time today that the University of Washington has turned the ball over deep in Trojan territory. The interception in the first quarter thrown by Hobart. This time the handoff. Mishandled by Beno Bryant. The ball on the ground, and Merle is the one that falls on it. Larry Smith and his Trojans dodge a bullet there and keep it to a 14 point lead for Washington. So it is first and 10. Ball on the 15 yard line for Southern Cal. They dodged a bullet after the fumble by Beno Bryant and Billy Joe Over. One receiver to the right side, they'll keep it on the ground. And boom, Steve Edmund is there waiting for number 23, Esther Street. Edmund with yet another tackle for loss. He had 14 and a half coming into the game. Vino trying to figure out how the ball bounced off of his arm. Just flat out didn't get his bits on it. Much like the Cal game, the Washington Cal game. Washington with opportunities they do not take advantage of. Keeping an opponent in the game. The longer you keep the underdog in the game, the stronger they get. Second down and 11. I'll tell you that defense is getting stronger too. There's what's worked though as they try to go with the pass. No, they're staying out of bounds. As number 19, Travis Hanna, comes up with a catch going against Shane Kaukoa. Hanna's had a great day. He's not alone when it comes to receivers that have had a good day for USC. They've been putting it up. Johnny Martin has been catching the majority of the balls, but spreading it around. Hanna with a couple already. You get a guy with his speed out in the open field, you get Falcoa just barely gets enough of Travis Hanna to get him out of bounds. The speaker would not have been caught. First and 10, from the 33 yard line. A little misdirection now. As Creighton carries. Steve Edmond on the tackle, number 90. Estrus Creighton is a transfer, a junior from Huntington Beach, California. And 6'2, 190 pounds, as you see. Chico Fraley injured. If you look at Steve Edmund, number 90, in his battle up front, you can see that people just keep coming and he fights them off. First it's Clay Hadabaugh, then the fullback Spears. Second down and eight. Gary with receiver to both sides, wants to go again to the other side, to the right, as he was looking for Curtis Conway and overthrew him, and Shane Falcoa was there anyway. Fraley, though, is the biggest concern for the defense now. Chico Fraley came into this game with a big pad on his right hand. That's obviously where the pain is. See him unwrapping the hand to get down and see what exactly is going on underneath so, all the foam. Well, that means Hillary Butler is in there along with Dave Hoffman or James Clifford. In this case, it's James Clifford along with Hoffman. Third down and eight. Reggie's got a man open. Did they call it good? No, incomplete. It would have been a first down had it been caught by Hannah. There's an example of the frustration that Larry Smith and Ray Doerr, the quarterback coach, have with their quarterback, Reggie Perry, with an open receiver for first down yardage. The ball's not on target, and they're forced to punt. 7-21 remaining in the third quarter, and USC will indeed punt the ball. Huskies have scored one touchdown in each quarter so far. They've yet to score in the second half. Bill back to punt. Bill Bryant to receive. Good punt. High spiral. Bill Bryant to the 22. Gets away from one man, but a host of USC Trojans come down. It got a flag down near the play where Bill Bryant is. We'll wait and see. And evidently it's against Washington. A clip for a hole, possibly. 44-yard punt by Dale. So the Huskies are going to be deep in their own territory, no matter what they do. Ben O'Brien has been well contained by that punt coverage team of Ron Dale and USC. Dale averaging 38 yards net 
very, very good average, and that's one reason why. You get people downfield running like that. As dangerous as Dean O'Brien is, he's got no place to go. Clipping on the receivers. They have the distance to the goal. First down. So the Huskies will be clear back on their own 10, 11 yard line. Once again, the Huskies commit a penalty, and when they do, they don't mess around. 10, 15 yards at a time. They'll start deep in their own end when we come back. Johnson is warming up. Freshman quarterback for USC. Washington with its worst field position of the day to start a drive. Their own 10 yard line after the clipping penalty. First and 10 with Mario Bailey wide to the right side. He knows Ryan. And he slips as he goes down at the 13 yard line. With Matt Gee on top of him. Gee, the leading tackler, as we said. He's caused four fumbles this season for USC. He's obviously involved in the play a lot. He's either bringing the guy down or bringing the guy down and getting the ball out. One of the few seniors they have, one of the problems of this team is his youth. Dean O'Brien now with 131 yards. And now on second down, he carries again. Number 17, Lamont Hollenquist coming in with a move to bring him down. He's the outside, strong side linebacker. Junior out of Linwood, California. Like he's converted safety. Not all that big. You talk about the problems of depth. We've got a youngster playing out of position. He's a big safety at two and a quarter, but not used to playing outside linebacker. Makes a nice play there. And the Huskies third and long. Third down and four dudes. Rather third down and seven. And they try to go and they do. Curtis Gaspar, but short of the first down. So now you're getting into itchy territory. Huskies need a big time punt from John Waddell. An opportunity there for the Huskies to really establish their dominance, their physical dominance in this game. Drive yeah. the ball out of their own end, but you get stuffed on the first two downs and you're forced to throw on third and seven. And then you don't throw it deep enough or run a route deep enough for first down yardage. You're forced to punt from inside your own five yard line. Waddell back to punt on his own four yard line. Let's see if SC comes with a block. Good fun. Nose comes over. Conway from the 35. Tries to go up the middle and nothing doing as Matt Jones is one of the first to get there along with Steve Springstead number 49 and Leif Johnson 34. 46 yard punt. So Wardell does the job and only a two yard return. Time out on the field. We'll be back with 5.15 left in the third quarter. First and ten, Brad Johnson comes into play, or rather, Ron Johnson comes into play, quarterback for USC. And Rob's first pass is complete. Jaime Fields defending number three. So the youngster comes in for Reggie Perry. A little change of pace at the quarterback position. A true freshman, he has not redshirted. Younger brother of current Michigan State quarterback Brett. Six for nine last week for a touchdown. Trying to get the ball in the end zone somehow. Perry's done a good job moving the ball, but he hasn't been able to put points on the board. His longest pass play is 22 yards. Let's see what he does now on second down and six. One receiver to the right side. Keep it on the ground. And the Huskies are there. Dave Hoffman in the backfield. Hoffman. 
really asserting his dominance on defense here in the third quarter. Once again, we isolate on Dave Hoffman. Nobody touches him. Steps up into the play. This time a linebacker is making tackles on running plays behind the line of scrimmage. You know he's forcing the issue. He's being aggressive. He's playing a great game today. Been involved in many a play. Third down and eight for Johnson. Receivers wide to both sides. Let's see if the Huskies try to blitz the youngster. Here they come. Yes, they do. And Hannah somehow comes up with a catch. A circus catch by Travis Hanna and a headsy pass by the young freshman. Dana Hall was in position to make the play, but Travis Hanna did make the play. You can see there's a lot of people up front. Hanna split to the right. You know those up front guys are going to come. Hanna is one on one with Dana Hall inside, but Hall makes the break on the ball, but Hanna keeps him on his back and hauls it in. Kakoa can't get there in time to help out. First and 10 on the 43 yard line. They go with the option pitch. This time there's room. Great. Could go all the way. Walter Bailey gets him out of bounds inside the five yard line, and you have yourself a new ball game. This SC team is fired up. A 39 yard play as Estrus Creighton. The transfer out of Huntington Beach goes all the way down inside the five to the four yard line. Johnson is supposed to be the passing quarterback, but the option play with the freshman gets the ball out to the junior college transfer. Some nice blocking downfield from your wide receivers. And Estes Creighton has his longest gain of the year. So it is first and goal from the three yard line. Let's see what the Huskies do now. 14 to nothing, Washington. But. Obviously, the flag down. Everybody's pointing fingers. We'll see who's correct. Well, I think Donald Jones may have gotten in there a little soon and then thought, well, I better point at somebody. The lineman <laughs> looks like he's explaining that somebody jerked a hand on the SC offense. We'll yeah. find out SC's here. SC's backing up. Dead ball. Ball start. On the offense. Donald Jones team. did the trick. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Good for him. That moves it back to the nine yard line. Still first and goal. The Huskies' inability to take advantage of the field position, the two turnovers deep in USC territory, keeps USC hopeful. Big plays by the USC offense keeps them in the ball game. So it's first and goal, no wide receivers. Everybody's in tight. Johnson. And he is all down in a hurry by Tommy Smith, who comes up from the rover position. If you go back to 1990 and remember the home game up there, USC has gone six straight quarters without any points, no field goals, no touchdowns. 31 to nothing in Seattle last year on October 2nd. No points so far. 3:26 to go in the third. The Husky defense hopes to keep it that way through at least one more quarter. Second and goal from the 10-yard line. Johnson trying to go with the timing play. No flag. Crowd wanted one, but I really think Dana Hall was playing his position and held his ground well. He did hold his ground. The only question is, he did not play the ball. Sometimes the officials may throw a flag. You can see, again, the fade route thrown for Curtis Conway against Dana Hall. Dana Hall, six foot three, tough to throw this route on. You see, he tries to turn around and find it. No flag thrown. SC is 5 of 14 on third downs today. This time Morton to the left side. Wide receiver to the right. Johnson, a lot of time. What do they call it? They say it's good. Down to the... Uh, no touchdown signed by any referee, so it's down on about the six-inch line. Johnny, Johnny Morton, Morton, the receiver. Is in the end zone, comes out to make the catch. The officials say... Yeah, most of your body's in the end zone, but the ball never got there. That's right. Obviously, the Trojans will go for it on fourth down. We'll take a look at it here. Good throw by the freshman to the one spot. Nobody can get it but your guy. You can see awfully Ooh. close to that line. <laughs> that ball looks like it's over the line. 
from here it looks like six points for USC but the official makes the call the ball is just here we outside go. the goal line fourth down flag down the ball carrier is short and we'll see where the movement was most likely motion against USC let's wait and see we've got a Dead ball. field goal kicker ball coming start. into the game now. on the offensive team five yard penalty still for us down goal at the five and so J.J. Dudum is coming in the backup kicker for Larry Smith I've missed one already they get a look here fourth and go at the inches the right tackle Tony Baselli makes the move down too early crucial <laughs> crucial mistake yeah, he's a redshirt for freshman. USC <laughs> a redshirt freshman who's excited so making the attempt J.J. Dudum from the 13 so it'll be a 23 yard attempt tough angle this close into the goal line he missed an earlier attempt and this one is good so after a full game and two quarters and almost all of the third quarter USC finally put some points on the board against Washington we'll be back Rob Johnson coming off the field or coming off the bench and playing very well. The pure freshman engineering that scoring drive, the first against Washington for USC in almost seven quarters with 2.04 remaining here in the third quarter. That's so, that's call that a wake up call for Washington's offense. That field goal by this man, J.J. Dudum. You can move the ball all you want, but you got to get points on the board. Washington has struggled today. They've been shooting themselves in the foot again. Dudum, speaking of feet, finds new strength and kicks it off through the end zone. Rob Johnson, a good job there. Two scoring drives last week against California. One for one in the scoring drive department here this week. Billy Joe Hobart and his Husky offensive teammates. A nice time to respond and answer back with well, points on the board for Washington. What they need is what we saw against Nebraska now, and that's a grind it out six minute drive on the ground and score a touchdown. SC's fired up right now. First and 10 from the 20 yard line. Vino Bryant looks for the hole, gets one. Nine yards after getting hit back on the 25. Stefan Pace makes the tackle just short of the 30 yard line. So it'll be second down. Oh, they marked the ball way back on the 27, 28 yard line. I thought he was up at almost to the 30, evidently a knee touch. So it is second down and two. Bino short of the first as he goes down. He was met by Gideon Mer Merrill, the weak side inside linebacker out of Palm Springs, just a sophomore. This is, the, this is the time of the game where you look for those big Husky offensive linemen to establish themselves. 300 pounds across the board ought to be able to wear down a much, much smaller USC defensive line. Fatigue starts to set in. Those big boys get even bigger. It's third down and one. Ryan on the sweep. Got to hurry. Just makes it. Just gets the first down after good pursuit by Merrill. Number 84. They showed inside, inside, and then dash to the outside think back to the last series Washington tries to pound it out on short yardage situations deep in their own end in the middle that time they go wide and are successful not by much but they are successful three wide receivers to the right side on first and ten from the 31 yard line Billy Joe across the middle McCain up to the 45 and brought down at the 46 yard line of Washington good for the first down as Lamont Hollenquist, the outside linebacker, makes the tackle. A 15-yard gain. The outside receivers for Washington have been very well controlled by USC today. Only the second catch for Orlando McKay. Only two for Mario Bailey. Mario Bailey only has 26 yards receiving in the game today. And he's averaging well over 100 per game. Ball on the 46, first down. 
There's Mario Bailey. Cuts to the inside. And is met by a number of USC Trojans, but they're in the USC territory. Short of the first down. But again, good yardage. You look at Chris Allen, the defensive coordinator for USC, exhorting his troops. They've done a good job of controlling Washington, a team that can score in a hurry. Over 41 points per game, only 14 so far. Second down and three. There's the audible. Vino up the middle and should have the first down with one second remaining in the third quarter and the clock expires. So Washington picks up the first down. They do not score any points, let alone any touchdowns in the third quarter. And they find themselves leading by the score of 14 to 3. I'm Don Poyer along with Chuck Nelson. We're about to begin the fourth and final quarter of this game. I suppose all of us are saying, guys, what's wrong with the Huskies? Why aren't they scoring more points? Let us not forget, this is Southern Cal, and this is in Los Angeles, and this is a place where Washington has never won since 1980. You think about it, compare it to the UCLA game <laughs> last year. That's right. You're playing a team that no doubt has great athletes on it. They just haven't won a whole lot of games. California defeating USC last week Stanford Notre Dame California three straight losses for Southern Cal and a 10 game winning streak for these Huskies eight straight under Billy Joe over Still waiting for national television to come back. A lot of Husky fans here down on the other end of the stadium. I think you're right, Chuck. Six, seven thousand people here. Forty nine players on this Husky team are from California, 28 of which are from Southern California. So you got a lot of family around here. First and ten on the 44. Bryant with the call and not much. Two or three yards as Matt Gee closes in. For USC, the tackler. Out of Arkansas City, Kansas. Huskies not been all that effective running the ball inside from the middle of the second quarter on. Saw a couple of passes to the wide receivers earlier in this drive. I'd like to see him try to open it up a little bit more. SC's awful fired up. Make him cover the whole field. Second down and seven. Oh! Wanting to go deep. Bailey intercepted. Jason Oliver, number four. That had trouble written on it from the beginning with double coverage. Had trouble written on it because Billy Joe Holbert was looking at Mario Bailey from the time the ball was snapped. Mike Salmon, the free safety, this whole time is on a full sprint over to help out Jason Oliver. But Oliver needs no help. His fifth interception of the year. Mike Salmon doing a nice job of filling, coming over. Now, let's see what Rob Johnson does, Chuck. See the outside release by Mario Bailey. Oliver runs with him all the way. The ball is underthrown. Mario Bailey at only 5'8". Not going to outleap too many people. At 5'11", three inches advantage for Jason Oliver. First down from the nine. Estrus Creighton, the ball carrier. And he is met by Tyrone Rogers in a... A couple of other Huskies as Billy Joe Hobart's got to sit down and think about it. He's had two interceptions today. Oliver getting the second. Jason, or rather Stefan Pierce, the first. So it'll be second down and eight after the two-yard carry by Creighton. As you can see, we're in Los Angeles on 
on a very, very mild afternoon. Second down and eight. Ball on the 11. Johnson. One receiver wide. Too far. As Travis Hanna was the intended receiver. Rob Johnson rolling out much like we've seen Reggie Perry do. Reggie Perry very good at throwing the ball on the run. The freshman misfires there. Larry Smith very happy so far with his change of place at quarterback. Rob Johnson has done the job. Well, he's not making any huge mistakes. Don James will see a lot of Rob Johnson for the next three years after today. Third down and eight. Play action on third and long. Here come the Huskies and they nail him. Tommy Smith comes up with the play. His second sack of the year and they lose seven. So it's time to punt as Ron Dale We'll have to boot it out of the end zone thanks to that man. You know with a true freshman playing quarterback, he's going to see a lot of pressure. Tommy Smith, the rover, the strong safety for the Huskies, is quickly into that backfield. And Tommy, Ron Dale. You'll remember Tommy Smith in his first game ever down here blocking that punt, which resulted in a Husky touchdown. Dale gets this one away. Dean O'Brien with room to run from his own 47, trying to go right. Hillary Butler trying to get him a block. A couple of dodges, gets down to the 40, finally to the 37-yard line. Boy, some nifty juking and moving and bada bing, bada boom <laughs> by Vino Bryant. We'll be right back. There's your score. Washington with no points in the second half. We're in the fourth quarter with 12.49 remaining. First and 10 for Washington. Ball on the 36, their best field position yet to start a drive. Jay Berry trying to bang his way inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. It's Matt Gee. And I believe it was Matt Willig also in there defensively for USC. Three-yard gain by Berry. Used to seeing a lot of alternation at, at tailback with Barry and Ben O'Brien. Are we going to see some alternating at quarterback? Mark Brunel awaiting his chance to possibly get in. Second down and seven. Three wide receivers to the right side for Billy Joe Holbert. Option, going to keep it himself. Nice job by Billy. Should have the first down by length of the football. Matt Willig, number 96, on top of him, along with Mike Salmon. One of the nice things about having a 225 pound quarterback yes. is if he can turn that corner and get into the defensive backfield, he's bigger than anybody he's going to run into. We saw Mark Brunel. He was awfully effective running the option. Really, Joe Holbert picks up first down yardage on the option play there. McKay and Bailey go wide to the right, and it's a career day for Bean O'Brien with 149 yards. Time out. Time out. USA. Time out by time Southern out Cal. One. Some confusion on personnel, not having the people that are supposed to be in there. Well, you know, and I think it's they saw all of a sudden Bailey and McKay both went wide to the right side and caught them without their nickel defense. Just guessing. Somebody that's supposed to shift over to that side doesn't do the proper shifting. The Husky offense. You see Billy Joe Hobart, Eric Bjornson, Mark Brunell, Matt Jones, and Darius Turner. Getting the word from Coach Jeff Woodruff. Well, some people might wonder why aren't we seeing more now of, of Mark Brunell. Truth of the matter is, Chuck, I think you made the great point during the break. Billy's a he's a fighter. You're not he's not the kind of kid you pull when he gets uh, into a slump. The reasons you pull quarterbacks, if if things aren't going their way, is because a you've got somebody better who can make provide a change of pace. For Mark Brunell at this point with his knee injury and his Limited mobility is probably not a better quarterback than Billy Joe Hobart. Or if you've got a quarterback that will get down on himself if things aren't going his way. And Billy Joe Hobart, if he is anything, he is a kid that's going to fight back when something goes wrong. As competitive as you'll ever find. 
Remember the Nebraska game, he misfired for a while and then came back and led the Huskies on a number of second half scoring drives. As we set it up, there is the 11.52 remaining here in the ball game. Washington scoring no points in the second half and only a 23 yard field goal by J.J. Dudum for Southern Cal. The points for USC coming in the third quarter. First and 10 now from the 26 yard line. And a great hit by number 17, Lamont Hollandquist, the outside linebacker. The job of closing, we talked about his moving from free safety. One of the things that free safety can do is close quickly on a play. Get a look there at how even this game is. Yeah, you haven't seen numbers like that racked up against this Husky defense in a long time. 300 yards. Second down and 10. Ball still on the 26. Huskies need to do something here with this field position. Simply too good. Three receivers right. Billy going upstairs. Got Mario Bailey. Can he catch it? No! My goodness sakes, alive. Had his man clearly beat. All three wide receivers on the right side of the field are in man-to-man -man situations. Mario Bailey, number five, on Stefan Pace, number nine. Once again, the outside release by Mario Bailey, and once again, the ball overthrown just barely by Billy Joe Hobart. I'll tell you, the speed mismatch between Bailey and Stefan Pace is huge. Anytime they can get one-on-one -on -one with Mario Bailey on a safety, you're going to try to take advantage of it. It is third down and ten. Too high. Billy Joe's having a tough day. He waits way too long there. McKay is open. Well, he earlier. had to wait for his receiver to get open, but he still didn't get open. He's thrown it on the rhythm. I think McKay had position on the defensive back. Over continuing the struggle brings out Travis Hansen for the 43 yard attempt. Hoping he's, to make it seven in a row yeah, he's on, on the a, season. He's on a roll, is right. A big one here with Force USC. 43 yards. Score three times. From the left hash mark. Long enough. No good. Wide to the right. Huskies have done everything possible to keep SC in this game. A fumble back in the third quarter with good field position. A missed field goal now with a missed, uh, with good field position. Let's take a timeout. No huddle now by USC as they come right out. Washington, Washington has spoiled us somewhat, or as you put it, Chuck, we're so used to seeing them succeed on golden opportunities to score like they've had today, but have failed. We've seen Mario Bailey get open deep twice, Aaron Pierce open deep once, the ball not delivered, and we're just so used to seeing when there's an opportunity to be taken advantage of, such as field position, open receivers, the last few games, field goal attempts, Anytime the Huskies are in a position to put a game out of reach, they've done so. And today, two turnovers deep in Trojan territory, a missed field goal there by Travis Hansen. The Huskies have had opportunities to, to be in the 30s easily in points, and, and everybody's sitting back and watching the end of the game. Instead, USC's in a position where a touchdown and a field goal can tie it up. First and 10 on the 26-yard line for Southern Cal as they try to go deep right off the bat. Johnny Morton, the intended receiver against Dana Hall. And there's been a lot of challenging of the outside people like Dana Hall, Walter Bailey, and William Doctor today. It was definitely a major cog in their game plan, Chuck. Obviously, when you're playing aggressive defense, sending lots of people from up front, you don't have a lot of help in the back. Dana Hall does a good job there, but you put so much pressure on your <laughs> cornerbacks in playing this defense, and SC's been able to make the plays when they were there, unlike the Huskies. Second down at 10, look out. Here comes Andy Mason with a sack. He's had a very good day. He got a sack, of course, last week against Arizona State. No six shooter this time. A loss of six yards. One of his earlier sacks today, he unloaded that six shooter, has it reloaded. You see, 
over there. A missed blocking assignment on the left side. Both Tony Baselli and Chris Polak go block down on Tyrone Rogers. Andy Mason comes completely free. Anybody unblocked can make a play, and Andy Mason takes advantage of it. Third down and 16 with two receivers to the left side for Johnson. Got room to run, and is hauled down by Donald Jones and DeMarco Farr, number 75. That's the kind of series the Husky defense, the Husky coaching staff was looking for. Uh, three plays and out. Nothing close to a big play by the Trojan offense. Get some field position back once again with under 10 minutes to go. The Husky offense needs to come out and put together at least a time-consuming drive, even if they don't put points on the board. 9.44 remaining. Ron Dale back to punt. And Vino Bryant is there to receive. Pretty deep. Vino Bryant will try to return it. Can't get away. Lamont Hollenquist in there on the play with his teammate for seven cow. So Vino Bryant and company will set up office near the 30-yard line of Washington. Back in a moment. Nine twenty-nine remaining. We talk about streaks and the busters of those streaks. USC has done it, hasn't he? Uh, haven't they, Chuck? We get a look here at four separate seasons in which the University of Washington only had one loss. In all four seasons, USC was the game that they lost. You also look at 1984, an almost identical situation to this one. The Huskies came down to the Coliseum eight and zero to play a USC team, and USC came out on top. That, of course, season that USC ended up undefeated in conference, went to the Rose Bowl, and the Huskies to the Orange Bowl. Huskies now with first and 10 from their own 30-yard line. Bryant again. Bryant out to the 36-yard line. Holland Quist, Mike Salmon, also Merrill out there, number 84. Gain of four yards. Darius Turner comes out. As Bino Bryant has had a busy, well, it's been a career day for Bry uh, for Bino. Over 150 yards now for Bino Bryant. Started things off with that big 55-yard touchdown in the first quarter. He'd like to break a big one to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter. He's at 152. It's second down and five. Bino again. Not this time. Terry McDaniels, number 78, the defensive tackle, able to hold up his man as well as make the tackle. One thing. That may have been in the favor of USC in this game as they play a lot of funky defenses. They don't just line up and say, here we are, you block me, you block me. They stunt a lot of people, lots of loops and twists. They move people around. They don't just line up and play ball. They're trying to fool you on defense also. Four of 12 on third down conversions. They need three here. Hot sweep. Bryant, got to hurry. Won't make it. Lamont Hollenquist comes up to stop Bean O'Brien. Lamont Hollenquist has come up big here in the fourth quarter. Made a lot of plays. Once again, third and three. The Huskies try to go outside and are unsuccessful. Lots of big third and short, fourth and short plays by that USC defense. Huskies do not run much time off the clock. No matter that they didn't put points on the board. Fourth down with Wardell back on his 25. And Curtis Conway to receive. The block was on. Four Trojans back there. And Riddell is able to get it back inside the 20 to the 18-yard line of Southern Cal. Nice job by John Riddell. His longest punt, by the way, is 58 yards. This one was 42. But no return. And the Huskies have put SC back deep in their own territory. 7.25 remaining in the ball game. Time becoming a factor now and a bit more of an ally for the Huskies. An 11-point lead for Washington. Obviously, USC must score twice. A touchdown, two-point conversion, 
and a field goal in order to tie. Hard to score points against this Washington defense, but score twice in seven and a half minutes. First down, Johnson, lots of time. And now it's survival of the fittest. All that, and he gets two yards. Chico Fraley knocks him out of bounds. He looks awfully comfortable for a freshman quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> that shows no signs of being flustered. Good poise there, rolled out, was looking past first, saw lots of open territory, and took advantage of it, and also got out of bounds. He has good Stops size. The clock. Good size, too, Chuck, at 6'4", 195. Had some heat on him today, a couple of sacks, a lot of hits after throws, but he just gets back up and goes back in the huddle and says, come on, fellas, do it again. Well, it's got to be an adventure for him. Second down and seven. Hannah goes in motion. Again, the rollout. Got a man, Hannah, back down. And the play goes down against Shane Palcoa. Shane walks away knowing it. He talked about the one reason that the officials will throw a flag is because the defender doesn't know where the ball is and is not making a play on the ball. That's a perfect example there. So USC, that quickly, is out of bad field position. Go from second and eight. You see here, Shane Falcoa trying to make up ground on the receiver. Can't Slipped. react to the ball. Speak come out from under him. He goes underneath Travis Hand on the flag, comes out of the pocket. Another big penalty for Washington. Yeah, but that's not that many, Chuck. That's only four today for 50 yards. That's better than 13 for 110. They're keeping it in single digits, <laughs> but again, when they do get a penalty, it's not a little offside. They're always 10 and 15 yards at a time, and in this case, USC picks up a lot of valuable field position. On first down, they try to carry with a fullback. As Wes Bender carries, trying to keep the linebackers honest and everyone in their lane defensively. 6.56 remaining in the game. Let us not lose our perspective. This is a Washington team that has not won down here since the beginning of the 1980s decade, 1980, 20 to 10, when Chuck was playing way back then. Yeah, that, that tells you how long ago it was. Second down. And they stay inside the tackles, and the crowd's not all that thrilled about that. Crowd likes to see Rob Johnson put the ball in the air, not hand it to all Spears. Raul, known primarily as a blocker, as every USC fullback has been known. We've seen two consecutive carries by fullbacks. The success that they've had with the option outside and with Johnson throwing the ball, you certainly expect to see it on third and eight. Third down and eight, and uh, the Husky defense cannot go to sleep. They've just got to be careful. They've, SC's been so close to going deep all day for a touchdown. Can't see the 25 second clock from, from our position. I don't know if that was a factor or if there was movement. Dead ball foul. Ball start okay. on the offense. Five yards. Still third down. So it was SC. Not making their task any easier, making it third and 13. Larry Smith sends in. Yanni Jackson and Larry Wallace with a new play. To finish my point, I, I realize this he's gone deep, but they've come so close to going deep and getting a touchdown. That's why Washington's got to stay sharp. Third and 13. Pass well short of the intended receiver, Johnny Morton, defended by Walter Bailey. And the Huskies have done the job, so it'll be time to punt. Dale averaging 41 yards per on his seven attempts today. Done a good job of covering punts. Ben O'Brien would like to make a big play from his punt return position. One of the best in the country. One touchdown already this year, a 53-yarder. Good time for the Huskies to run another one back. Well, Ray Horton did it back in 1980 when they last won here. Beautiful punt by... Dale all the way back to the 13. Ron Dale with a howitzer. Wind at his back, and he takes advantage of it, and good coverage again by Larry Smith's punt coverage team. Not just a great punt, but great tackling as well. 
53-yard punt by Ron Dale, and the Huskies are in the hole, but they've got the lead. First and 10 for Washington with 5.26 remaining in the ball game. They have a 14-3 lead, and the Huskies now would love to have a five-minute drive. In addition to that, one thing we're going to see the Huskies do is take care of the football. A turnover deep in your own end would allow SC to score and score quickly. The two factors that SC is fighting is time and the Huskies. The turnover here would help them take advantage of both. Four-yard gain. Second down and six. Bailey and McKay to the left side. All of the 20. Billy Joe can still pitch it. And wisely holds on. Ooh, that's dangerous territory. <laughs> He's thinking about pitching it as he goes around the corner. And Willie McGinnis is chasing the play down from the back side. He's almost running in between <laughs> Billy Joe Hobart and the pitch man, Vino Bryant. Could have intercepted the pitch. David. Talk about taking care of the ball. The option's not a play that takes care of the ball unless the quarterback hangs on to it. Well, that old riverboat gambler, Keith Gilbertson, the offensive coordinator, keeping things interesting. Third down and two. Bailey has the first down at the 28-yard line. So the Huskies will hold on to the ball as the clock will continue to roll after they move the chains another 10 yards towards the SC goal. Big, big, big play there for the Huskies. They pick up the first down and retain possession of the ball, but you also figure there's another minute and a half, two minutes off the clock. Dangerous throw from the right hash all the way out to the left side of the field, but Billy Joe Hobart and Mario Bailey are there to pull it off. So first and 10 on the 28-yard line. The clock is now rolling, and we're under four minutes. 3.49. Toss sweep, Barry. Oh, he got a couple of dandy blocks. Let's see who the people were. The, Matt Jones was one of them. And also, Jim Neville, the guard, did a great job of blocking for Jay Barry that time. You never get to see them. We're taking a network feed of video here, but... When you really need the yardage to get out of the hole and hold on to the ball, Matt Jones and Jim Neville should be given credit on that, that seven-yard gain. You look here at Mario Bailey. Only 5'9", 168 pounds, but he's one of the leaders in the country. Number one in receiving, number one in the conference in receiving yards, number two in the country. The all-time Husky leader in receiving yards. He's a big play guy at only 5'9". Second down and three. And Jones carries. Short of the first down. Actually, I think the scoreboard was a little off. It was second down at about five. Clock continuing to run. Two minutes and 40 seconds to go. The Huskies using up every second of the 25 second clock with each play. Yes. Good game management by Billy Joe Hobart. It doesn't do you any good if you're not picking up first downs. And it's a tough one here with third and one. Third down and one. Flag goes down as Barry breaks one free. Barry all the way up to the 48-yard line, but let's wait and see what it's all about. Lincoln Kennedy late getting up. Willie, Mc, Willie McGinnis, a little aggressive on the Trojan defensive line, steps over the Was neutral zone, okay. the infamous neutral zone. Offside on the defense, Kermit refused. First down. So the Huskies have more time to buy. 2.13 remaining in the game, and I think a few Husky fans can start breathing a little more <laughs> easily. Certainly the man in the purple sweater right there, Coach Don James, is breathing a little bit more easily, but not that much. Isn't that something? It's never over till it's <laughs> over. 11-point lead, two minutes remaining in the game, and everybody, or at least every Husky fan's going, yeah, but it's not over yet. It's not over yet. <laughs> Drew, too many games with Southern Cal. Too many. Remember those two straight losses down here in his last two trips by virtually one or two points, going for two on uh, two occasions and last-minute touchdowns by Washington. 
Matt Gee on the stop defensively. Jay Berry had 27 yards up until that carry. Minute 38 remaining, and a timeout is called by Southern Cal. So Don James has snapped that string by Larry Smith and the Trojans down here. And as a matter of fact, the Huskies will have two straight against the Trojans. Washington now with its eighth play of this particular drive. There was 3-12 remaining in the game. There is now a minute 38, so they're doing what they need to do. Hold on to the ball as they lead 14-3. Jay Berry in for Bean O'Brien near the 47-yard line as timeout again called by Southern Cal. And Smith will trying to keep as much time for his Trojans as possible. Minute 29 to go in the ball game. One timeout remaining for USC, or that was their last one, excuse me. Our thanks, by the way, to today our spotter, Rob Gerson, our statistician, Stacy James, who again made the trek on the road for the sake of Chuck Nelson and myself. I wish I could say that was the only reason, but always doing a great job. Minute 29 remaining in the game and a timeout called. So this is going to be the fourth straight loss for Larry Smith and USC. Already losing to Stanford, Notre Dame, and California. But a moral victory of sorts in this one with the Huskies winning. <laughs> I know, I'm seeing those gloves. I'm not going to say it. That is the Husky group, by the way. Husky man, you can hear the USC band. We haven't heard that all that often today. Well, we have not seen Traveler make any many trips around the track. The, Husky, the Trojan mascot horse. See the Husky band. Now, if they could play those things and blow those things up at the same time, that would be a trick. Just for fun, as you look at these four games that SC lost, they lost to Stanford 24-21 down here. Close game. They lost to Notre Dame back there 24-20. Close game. They lose to California in Berkeley, 52-30, not a close game. <laughs> and then this one, 14-3, a semi-close game. You look, you're looking at a young uh, and team. And the reason, Chuck, that I say that is because of the national polls. How will the country look at Washington? Third down and three. Barry has the first down, and that ought to do it. Yeah, we got some arguing going on between Malabala of Washington and Willie McGinnis of Southern Cal. Clock has stopped to move the chains with a minute 24 remaining. <laughs> but how do you think they'll perceive it, Chuck? Well, anytime anybody beats USC, I think that there's still that image that USC is a good football team, regardless of being three and five or three and six after this game. You've got a team that everybody expects to win every game, USC. And if you can come out and beat them in the Coliseum, regardless of the score, I don't think it'll hurt you at all. Especially at home. Well, Washington has not given up a touchdown in yet another game. They've only given up six rushing touchdowns all season. Under a minute. And that is something to be very proud of, is to hold USC to three points at home. Four-yard gain, 45, 44 seconds remaining. And the Huskies have won this one. And the Huskies move to 9-0. and oh. Up next for Washington, as you see Larry Smith, Oregon State in Corvallis, and then home for the Apple Cup against their cousins, the Cougars. First, check that, second down and six. Barry again, and they're happy to just wind the clock down, and that may even do it. Washington Huskies and Don James in his 17th year comes up with one of those gems, those victories down in Los Angeles against Southern Cal. Larry Smith, on the other hand, goes to three and six, two and four in conference play. And two straight for Don James and the Huskies and Bean O'Brien against Southern Cal. A career-high day for Bean O'Brien, over 150 yards. 
And Billy Joe Holbert engineers another winner for the Washington Huskies. Once again, the final, Washington 14, USC 3, the undefeated Huskies, and that bandwagon continues to roll on. Final comment after this. Well, that's going to do it. Washington comes up with a very, very important win, of course, for the sake of staying undefeated. But psychologically, anytime you come down and beat USC in Los Angeles, huge lift for your program and everybody connected to it. Chuck Nelson, any final comments? I can say anytime you can come down here and come away with a W, you've got to be happy. It's a game, again, that Washington doesn't necessarily play their best football. A couple of penalties on defense, uh, opportunities on offense not taken advantage of, turnovers deep in scoring territory but you put enough points on the board both sides of the ball offense and defense played well enough to win and that's what you came down here to do so for washington husky fans the beat goes on for that undefeated season maybe a national championship certainly a very good shot at the rose bowl with two games remaining huskies they only need to win one of those two remaining games they can do just that and that maybe will be the motivation against oregon state win the game they go to the rose bowl that's simple once again, the final today, Washington winning it, going to 9-0 with a 14-3 victory over USC. For Washington, it's the Rose Bowl, hopefully. For USC, basketball's not far away. <laughs> for Chuck Nelson, I'm Don Poyer. See you next week.